cela ne semble pas être le cas, je demande à tous les délégations de savoir qui sont 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 les On November 10th, tonight, 37 years ago, has gone down in history as Kristallnacht, or the Night of the Crystals. This was the night on the 10th of November 1938, when Hitler's Nazi stormtroopers launched a coordinated attack on the Jewish community in Germany, burnt the synagogues in all the cities, and made bonfires in the streets of the Holy Books and the scrolls of the Holy Law and the Bible. It was the night when Jewish homes were attacked and heads of families were taken away, many of them never to return. It was the night when the windows of all Jewish businesses and stores were smashed, covering the streets in the cities of Germany with a film of broken glass which dissolved into millions of crystals, giving that night the name Kristallnacht, the night of the crystals. It was the night which eventually led to the crematoria and the gas chambers, Auschwitz, Birkenau, Dachau, Buchenwald, Theresienstadt, and others. It was the night which led to the most terrifying holocaust in the history of man. The Arab delegates talk of racism. It lies not in their mouths. What has happened to the 800,000 Jews who lived for over 2,000 years in the Arab land? who formed some of the most ancient communities long before the advent of Islam. Where are those communities? What happened to the people? What happened to their property? This wicked resolution must sound the alarm for all decent people in the world. The Jewish people as a testing agent has unfortunately never erred. The implications inherent in this shameful move are terrifying indeed. The vote of each delegation will record in history its country's stand on anti-Semitic racism and anti-Judaism. You yourselves bear the responsibility for your stand before history, for as such will you be viewed in history. But we, the Jewish people, will not forget. For us, the Jewish people, this resolution based on hatred, falsehood and arrogance is devoid of any moral or legal value. For us, the Jewish people, This is no more than a piece of paper, and we shall treat it as such. Thank you, Mr. President. Toutefois, Dahomey respects Judaism, just as it respects any other religion, and has nothing against the Jewish people, which has had to suffer Nazi atrocities. But we reject Zionism as a racist, expansionist ideology in its manifestations. Mr. President, may I be permitted to say that there is a vain illusion among those delegates who believe that with the anti-Zionist resolution, which Costa Rica will have to vote against, they will harm the Zionist people or the State of Israel. Quite to the contrary, that resolution of the Third Committee, if it is adopted, will only become as a lash of warning for the people of Israel to intensify its Zionistic uh, activities and struggle for freedom. It is a warning to all the free peoples of the world that the Hitlerian and fascist evil has not yet been eradicated from the face of the earth. We reject the claim of Zionism to be coextensive with Judaism. We reject the claim of Zionism to be coextensive with the Jewish people. And therefore we reject the claim of Zionism that to be anti-Zionist is to be 
anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic. Mr. President, there may, there may be more than one opinion as to what Zionism is or to what its effects are. We simply cannot accept, however, that Zionism constitutes a form of racial discrimination comparable to, for example, apartheid, which is the kind of doctrine and practice which has been universally accepted as racist. In the opinion of my government, a peaceful settlement of the conflict in the Middle East must respect Israel's right to live within secure and recognized boundaries, must recognize the right of the Palestinian people to express its national identity, and must include the termination of the territorial occupation Israel has maintained since 1967. However, our even-handed and constructive approach to the situation in the Middle East does not mean that we can accept resolutions as the one equating Zionism with racism and racial discrimination. Mr. President, my country broke off diplomatic relations with Israel because of her sympathy and support for the cause of our Arab brothers. We still condemn the expansionist policies of Israel and the racial overtones of its activities in the occupied Arab territories. We believe that the move to equate Zionism with racism and racial discrimination is precisely the sort of resolution which is unhelpful in this regard. Capriciously introduced and wantonly pursued it has proved the most divisive issue of this assembly. It may well lose support for the decade against racism. It has certainly exacerbated our differences. It risks bringing this whole organization into disrepute. It is exactly the wrong issue raised in the wrong way and at the wrong time, and we, sir, will have none of it at all. Britain cannot prevent the eventual passage of this resolution if that is the real wish of the majority of the nations assembled here. But is that really their wish? I doubt it. Most countries here would have been profoundly grateful if the issue had never been raised at all, and most, I suspect, would be deeply relieved if it were now to be permanently buried. For all our sakes, Mr. President, we should reflect seriously and dispassionately on what is at stake here this evening. It is with respect far more than the passage of a resolution of the General Assembly. Thank you. Nous en arrivons au projet de résolution 3. Concernant l'élimination de toutes les... We now turn to draft resolution 3. Elimination of all forms of racial discrimination. A roll call vote has been requested on this draft resolution. Abstention. Abstention, Greece. Abstention. Abstention, Grenada. Yes. Yes, Guatemala. Abstention. Abstention, Guinea. Yes. Yes, Guinea-Bissau. Yes. Yes, Guyana. Yes. Yes, Haiti. No. No, Honduras. No. No, Hungary. Yes. Yes, Iceland. No. <laughs> no, India. Yes. Yes, Indonesia. Yes. <coughs> Yes, Iran. Oui. Yes, Iraq. Yes. <coughs> yes, Ireland. No. No, Israel. No. No, Italy. No. No, Ivory Coast. No. No, Jamaica. Abstention. Abstention. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Yes. Yes, United Arab Emirates. None. Yes, with the delegate. Thank you. United Kingdom. No. No, <coughs> United Republic of Cameroon. Oui. Yes, United Republic of Tanzania. Yes, United States. No. German Democratic Republic. Yes. Yes, Germany, Federal Republic of. No. No.
Le résultat du vote est le suivant. 72 voix pour, 35 voix contre, 32 abstentions. Le projet de résolution est adopté. The United States rises to declare before the General Assembly of the United Nations and before the world that it does not acknowledge, it will not abide by, it will never acquiesce in this infamous act. Not three weeks ago, the United States representative in the Social, Humanitarian and Cultural Committee and what with what irony those terms ring on our ears today, pleaded in measured and fully considered terms for the United Nations not to do this thing. It was, he said, obscene. It is something more today for the furtiveness with which this obscenity first appeared among us has been replaced by a shameless openness. There will be time enough to contemplate the harm this act will have done the United Nations. Historians will do that for us, and it is sufficient for the moment only to note one foreboding fact. A great evil has been loosed upon the world. Now, I should wish to be understood wish it to be understood that I am here making one point and one point only, which is whatever else Zionism may be, it is not and cannot be a form of racism. In logic, the state of Israel could be or could become many things, theoretically including many things undesirable, but it could not be and could not become racist unless it ceased to be Zionist. The United States of America declares that it does not acknowledge, it will not abide by, it will never acquiesce in this infamous act. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs>